Ten years ago, a Hungarian lab reported a groundbreaking discovery. They found that the decays of some atomic nuclei disagreed with the current theories of physics. Their discovery made headlines as a potential new force of nature. Now a new paper reports they checked the observations. The 2015 discovery came from the Atomki Institute and has been called the Atomki Anomaly. Physicists at this place looked at what happens if you slam small charged particles like protons or alpha particles into a target that contains chemical elements with small atomic numbers like beryllium or helium. Sometimes the nuclei in the target will absorb the particles they've been hit by and then, after some while, they'll decay. The type of decay the Atomki people were most interested in was that resulting in an electron-positron pair coming out of a beryllium-8 nucleus. Using standard nuclear physics, they predicted the difference in angles between these particles, and that didn't fit the observations at all. They said that their result was incompatible with predictions at 6.8 sigma, which would be less than a 1 in trillion chance of it just being random noise. They assigned the observation to a new particle, which they called X17, because they calculated it would have to have a mass of about 17 mega electron volt. The paper was published in PRL, one of the top physics journals. But at first, it was mostly ignored by other physicists. The reason is, I believe, that 17 mega electron volt is in an energy range that's been experimentally tested many times. If there was such a particle, it'd be hard to understand why it wasn't seen in other experiments. But a year later, a group of fairly well-known particle physicists lent credibility to the idea. They published a paper, also in PRL, saying they'd found a way that such a new particle might only show up in these nuclear decays and not in any other experiment that had been done to date. To paraphrase Ronald Coase, if you torture the maths long enough, it'll confess to anything. The popular science media was all over this, declaring it as so often evidence for a fifth force. I explained in an earlier episode where that phrase comes from. The excitement built when the Atomki lab reported in 2019 that they saw similar things in the decays of more atomic nuclei. Other research labs began experiments to see if they could reproduce the observations. That sounds very promising. But some things were very odd about this story. You see, the people from this lab had reported various similar anomalies previously, going back almost a decade. Some of those vanished with better equipment. Some vanished for no reason. Some were eaten by the dog. No, I made this up, but you get the picture. This lab doesn't seem to be hugely reliable. Then they announced they've seen a new anomaly. Would you believe it? Right. And that follow-up paper from 2019? That's a preprint which wasn't peer-reviewed. But, plot twist, in 2021, another group came forward with a calculation saying that the Atomki observation was never incompatible with known physics. It's all standard physics. It's just that the maths is more complicated than you'd think. In their paper, they present the exact calculation and voila, it fits perfectly on the data. Actually, I think this calculation fits the data suspiciously well. Unfortunately, they don't say in the paper exactly how they did this calculation, just that it's partly numerical, so I can't check it. And the paper didn't get published. So this is super confusing. We're now not even sure it's an anomaly. And now this. Just last week, a result from another group appeared. This experiment was done by the MAC2 collaboration at the Paul Scherer Institute in Switzerland. They did not confirm the anomaly. Instead, they ruled it out, but not at a high significance. You see the summary in this figure. This red cross is the original anomaly. These contours are where the new experiment searched for a signal and didn't find anything. That said, this result has a low statistical significance of just about 2 sigma. This means they reject the hypothesis of that new X17 particle, but not with much confidence. The reason is that they don't have a lot of data yet. This experiment will continue to collect data, so we'll probably see better results in the near future. What does this mean? 
well, if you believe that the Atomki result was actually standard physics, then we now have a new anomaly at low statistical significance. If you believe that the Atomki result was an actual anomaly, which I think is the saner option, then the chances of new physics just sank, but not by much. There are various other experiments also looking into this. Basically, the current status of the X-17 story is physicists are still extremely confused, but now with more expensive equipment. To summarize, we might have discovered a new particle or not. Stay tuned for our next episode of the Anomaly Theatre. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. I found it to be very effective to learn something new. It really gives you a feeling for what's going on and helps you build general problem-solving skills. They cover a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on differential equations or large language models. And they're adding new courses each month. It's a fast and easy way to learn, and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with their course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for users of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.